down for one. Now Ryan, closed down by Cressinger, did well to find Boich. An offer to the club, but nothing came to fruition. He said any deal would have involved him coming back to the Mariners on loan anyway, but I'm sure he'll head to Europe at some point. And then you've got the two, the two big fellas, if you want to call them that, Michael Beecham and Topo Stanley. Very, very solid with Kovic. Solid and experienced. Kovic, Beecham and Topo. to explain that mid Bainsbury taking a risk being shut down by Ono good play from Matt Ryan one door closes and another opens of course Vukovic went to Turkey for what he thought was going to be a new club that went pear shaped and in that process pressure on them as well Possess set piece all that little bit of magic in the middle of the park to break things down to very astute tacticians in Graham Arnold and John Aloisi he looks up the line for Aziz Bayic now he wants to test his pace against Trent Sainsbury and the big stopper shows he has the lesson with Svan Svank Again, it's Fred applying the pressure. And Svansvike looks up and asks where the options are. Giving Josh Rose a big head start. And again, David Williams cutting in rather than staying wide. And uh, he has such enormous speed. Josh Rose at left fullback for the Mariners. Is With that change and introduction of Duganzic, see a little bit more adventure from the home side. Well, possibly so. Although Duganzic brings ability, he brings speed. Attacking cut and thrust. You wouldn't be convinced some teammates. They've got to find an injection quickly. Melbourne Hart, the game will just tick away from them, drift away from them. Well, there is still plenty of time. It's a good stop from Ryan as Hutchinson goes back to his keeper again. Svansvike. Eluding. There we go. With just over 20 minutes to go, we've equaled the record number of A League goals in a game. up pretty quick they've got another big big game next week obviously for this match because he knew that at some point he would have been coming on in didn't expect to start you can see he's in the right frame of mind and, and has prepared now would you expect them as the home team to be compact push high up and put the pressure on but didn't the mariners really exploit that with the first goal and then the second goal well mcgreen has still got some way to pick out Melbourne. material contact you mean he's got to make contact with his uh, with his socks or something <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> you're being mischievous I am you're right it's the heat it's getting up to be a twin striker with Daniel McBreen it's two banks of four four defenders four midfielders in parallel lines looking to repel the Brisbane Roar attack here and just woke up this morning with a stiff back and not, not able to take any part.
That's a great clearance from Matt Ryan right into the stride of Boich. Tell you, that's good play from Garcia, though. Look how he was sniffing, anticipating that something might come up. And he's just taken a chance there. And it was a mishit shot from David Williams. So nearly became a cross for him. He's second on the goals. Goals in his A-League career now. And just two this season. And both have come against the heart. has three Mariners for company. Kept it alive for Williams. Teasing one across to Fred. Chance for McAllister. And that's a great save from Matt Ryan. Oh, it certainly is. They look destined to score there. McAllister just tried to lift that one over Ryan. They just got a bit sloppy there. The Mariners and they certainly nearly took full advantage of Melbourne victory. Good work from David Williams down the left-hand side. shape of the Mariners that the Phoenix might aspire to one day consistently be like. Well, they could do worse, couldn't they? Because, uh, you know, McGreen. Blake Powell to give chase, but uh, Sainsbury back to his goalkeeper. Now McGreen. Nowhere to go for the Mariners skipper, but uh, back to Anderson. Blocked that last attack by the glory and then popped up for that free kick. In a quiet afternoon for him so far. Set in the pre Conceding anything. And I put that down to the conditions as well as the personnel they were missing. In the second half, everything's on now. Bernie Abini, the early substitution. It's about tempo. It's about playing the ball forward. Top ball Stanley now. Looks long. And again, too straight for Haliti to try and get on the end of. About to stand down. And that substitution... Hutchison for Montgomery just provides a little bit of insurance for Graham Arnold. Montgomery was sitting on a yellow cup. Hutchinson turning into trouble. Now Zankovic Brown straight onto him, straight in, in that midfield area. They're dominating. Now Ryan. Oh, he has to stretch for it. Manages to just control the ball out to McGlinchey. And when the Mariners score the first goal this season, they don't lose. They've gone on to win eight times and draw the other two of the ten times they've scored the first goal previously. Ryan finding Sainsbury. Again, that Kazanik can't get it past Boish. And McGreen doesn't expect that contact, contact from Berisha and could easily get winded there. That's the reason he probably went down. Shot from behind. There's no doubt. Like you said, he's not expecting it because he's not looking that way. Berisha came in to him, definitely went for it. There's no doubt now how much contact there was.
last time these teams met. It was the Mariners who ended that hoodoo. That the Royal yeah, that's been one of the keys tonight. Brilliant from Broish. Found Barisha quickly. Svansmark able to snuff things out. And Neuland made a great one. It just needed... Josh Rose, who's been excellent. Chances. Ricky Herbert, in a couple of moments, he can fix at half time. Still going to be a threat for this Mariners in the second half. Certainly got some weapons. It's Mariners. It's another illustration of a side that is in control. Not giving away free kicks. There's no ragged edge. Very little desperation which needs to be shown and with the clock ticking over it's now four hours since Wellington last scored a goal here at Blue Tongue this is this season week three in the F3 derby and then against Sydney at Allianz Stadium just after Christmas and that's what makes them championship material so solid defensively, compact, good lines. Certainly, maybe not the scoring as free-flowingly. As, as you indicated earlier, the, the weapons ahead on the bench. Not a defender in sight. Plenty of attacking players already on the park. Prepared to have a go. Last year, I think, on the road, they were a little bit more pragmatic. Forces. Same view once again on that occasion. Yeah, it's a fair point you make, Bobby. Still at times, you can still set up defensively. Give some specific player tasks as opposed to all out attack. A little bit more respect perhaps for the opposition. But still, you need. Out of any potential tight spot, the Mariners this evening. They've done it really well, Robbie. Really well. To pass your way out, you need good movement. Melbourne victory and Western Sydney Wanderers breathing down their necks. So perhaps rather exaggerated it looks a very solid performance field for Perth glory and it's a turnover the pressure from smelts and Miller first time ball Josh Rose gets there and Ryan clears and once again Blue Tongue Stadium last weekend against the victory Mariners are very quickly out of the blocks and it looks as though they've started with similar intent Robbie well, they normal t normally do here at home. No way to play against his former club. The club where he made his name, really, back in uh, the first season of the A-League for heading off overseas. Good distribution by Ryan for Rose. Forward by Ryan. Sainsbury. Good defending from the front by Dino Kressinger. Shinjiono will burst forward. It's fun to make the favourite to get there oh, first, though. Wrong option. Had Percy to send it back across goal. Another warning for the league leaders. which I suppose is uh, playing into Sydney FC's hands. And as a coach, Frank Farina would be absolutely delighted, wouldn't it? Substitute comes on, scores a crucial second goal. Nayland calling for the ball and receiving it. Straight at Ryan. 
It's been a rather low-key start on Adelaide United. Meantime, defending to do here as Lustica unleashes from long range. That's two sights as his hat in the opening 14 minutes. Well, it's been a good start by Brisbane. In control of the game, 67% of possession. Michael Theo, I don't know if he's touched the ball. And Graham Arnold's pocket, not quite sure what he was, what point he was trying to make. 